these potatoes look like they're finished. It's a good method uh, for cooking. Nice, it's great. Even slow heat. We should rock an underground meal. Micah's to the left of me, like cutting up a rabbit. I'm laying salt on a squash. It's got cake mix in it. And Martin's is making tamales. Where am I right now? Weirdo camp. Underground cooking is an ancient technique. It's been practiced all over the world throughout time. Polynesia, Mexico, North America, Cuba, you name it. What's great about it is it gets you outside, you use natural resources, and you can eat a great meal. Right now, we're gonna hang out with Daisuke and Yumi at Kaiseki Sakura, and they're gonna show us this great salt baking method that we can use when we start cooking underground. One of the reasons why we dropped by is we're uh, making a meal and we're going to be cooking it underground. And some of the things that we have to consider are how to package the food and prepare the food so that it can survive the fire. Sometimes like we cook in a salt and a egg white mixture and we put the fish inside and uh, you can directly put it on the fire. Is it something that we could do together to see what it looks like? <laughs> it's a secret, but that's okay. Oh, really? That's what you said. <laughs> we won't tell anyone. <laughs> How many eggs? Two or three, just to put the salt together. It's like a glue. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, work This is something I would have never have thought of. It looks like mashed potatoes. I guess you want it so that you can build with it. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. to hold its shape. I could fix my walls. Yeah, exactly. With this. Oh. Yeah, in Japan, we often use this uh, red snapper or pinky snapper. So today you came to a Japanese restaurant, so it's a Japanese flavor to it. So we're gonna put the pojicha, it's a roasted green tea. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Before I was eating something, I was eating something. I was eating結んできて家の人にバレそうになったのでそれを急いで土の中に埋めて隠して上で葉っぱをで隠して焚き火をしてる振りをしてたんだけど半日ぐらいしてから鳥を掘り起こしてみたら長上手に焼けてたまあまあ
you know, how we might cook it. You had a sweet idea of doing carrots in the ground. Yeah, the fire or the, the burning embers are here. Embers underneath the feet of the carrots. Underneath carrot. the feet of the carrots, right? Underground. So this heat is emanating up. If you plant your garden and you make your garden your oven as well, then it's sort of one-stop shopping. And then for your idea of like a bit of a slide or tunnel mm -hmm. for rapini. Mm -hmm. Like I want to make a little uh, rapini cart. So like tie the rapini in a little bundle, maybe in some kind of a tray that has water in it so that when the rapini cart goes through the actual hot area of the underground, the, the, hopefully the steam in the cart will like uh, cook the rapini. So it's like Hades amusement park ride. Yeah. Yeah, and then what about the rabbit? I think we should cook the rabbit in sort of like a rabbit stew in a big pot, and we can just put that in the pit and then cover it up. But then if we do that, then how are we going to check it's done? Here's my idea for that. We could have a copper tube or a steel tube that goes into the rabbit stew pot and has this long piece of metal that slides in, just like you're checking your transmission fluid or your engine oil. And then you can pull it out to check the temperature of the metal, uh, to know how hot your stew is. Mm -hmm. Or we could check it for fluid too, like if it went into the pot and like, you know, oh man, we gotta add another quart of like 10W30 olive oil. 10 to... Yeah, or, or some more broth and then we just pour it right in. So it's, it serves as a giant funnel and as a moisture gauge and a temperature gauge. So I'm thinking for dessert too, uh, and making some brownies, chocolate brownies using beets. Maybe we can cook the brownies in some kind of like vessel. We could hollow out a squash, mix up the cake batter and put it in the squash. And close the lid, drop it in the ground. Yeah, the vegetable is sacrificed in the process. Yeah, and it'll part a little bit of flavor to the cake. Yeah, let's do the salt technique on those. I think oh, we you, can... also, you also want to make polenta as well. Oh man, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so the polenta will be wrapped in like banana leaves or corn husks. I like corn husks because they're from, from around here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there are so many things going on with this meal. Yeah. All right, so let's get back to uh, loft and uh, like start getting ready. It's every kid's dream to set things on fire. With our underground cooking experiment, the menu includes rabbit stew through to beet chocolate brownies. We get an opportunity to build a city and then cook in it. How much of the food preparation can we do now? Because a lot of it's actually gonna be done at the site up north. We could mix our brownie mix to together right now, like the wet and the dry separate. Separate, yeah, okay. So that when we're up there, we can just mix them together. Have you made these brownies before? Yes. The color of the beets actually blends really well with the chocolate. We also have uh, cocoa nibs, too. Sweet, let's throw some nibs That'll in. That'll add some nice texture. Beet brownie mix is underway, man. All right, I'm gonna get going on these utensils. Soda, salt, powder. All right, that's it. Hey, dudes. Yep. When the wet and the dry get combined, do the chocolate chips and the cocoa nibs go in after that? You see the later part of the recipe? Later, cocoa nibs and chocolate chips. We're talking about wrapping the beet brownies in salt once they're inside of the squash. Yeah. So I'll make a salt mixture. Oh, that's right. Man, this vanilla smells good. It's gonna be a crazy salt mixture. Real great tea, chili, vanilla. Mixture for the salt. There, okay, that's the last rivet. Here's the dipstick sleeve. This is our rabbit stew broth level dipstick. Earth comes up above it. Then we can use this to check the liquid level as well as the temperature of the rabbit stew. It's a rapini cart. You know how I got this wheel in perfectly? Yep. You did a good job. This one's not so perfect. Oh, no, woo. <laughs> so, oh, so, man. The, the, Pretty funny, man. That's not the way I planned it. Just call it a side grinder, and then it's all set. So I'll just take out the rivets, and I'll have to do it again. So you were saying that you wanted to make a bouquet garni. We're gonna do thyme, margarine, a little rosemary, some black peppercorns, and some bay leaves. This is for the stock. It's not necessarily directly for the rabbit, it's just for flavoring the stock. You just make like a little bundle, and then you throw it in your stock, and then that way you don't have to go fishing for like 500 loose herbs. You just pull out the one bundle. Bouquet garni is, is direct translation, just bouquet of, of, of garni. Yeah, it's a garni, garni bouquet. Oh, man. Are you, are you doing an archaeological dig down there? I can't find the butcher's twine. What is a bundle in French? B the word. Bouquet? Like a bundle of flowers? A bouquet of flowers? But that's more like a bouquet. <laughs>
<laughs> not a bar. Are, like, are we getting lost in translation over here? I took apart our sushi mat to get some copper twine. Does that mean we can never make sushi again? Not with a mat. But don't you freestyle anyway? I use a J cloth. <laughs> <laughs> so the bouquet is done. What do you guys think we should put in the rabbit stock? Morels, carrots, shallots, bay leaves, um, celery, garlic. Cremini's. Cremini's, sure. Okay, that's our stock right there. And do you want to make a broth for the uh, polenta as well? Yeah. Fry some fresh rosemary, some shallots, a, a cremini mushroom, and a little garlic. And then I'm going to steep these chestnuts and these sun-dried tomatoes in some liquid. Oh yeah, you want a jalapeno it? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Throw them in. All right. You can't have a spaghetti western without some hot spice. Okay, just let that constitute. Summer. Hey, here's the rapini car. It's all fixed. See? Yeah, yeah it's totally good. straight. It works. So we gotta use one more. And then we're ready to go. We're going deep, deep, deep underground to make a meal that consists of rabbit stew, polenta with mushrooms, carrots that are cooked in the earth, a rapini rail train, as well as beet chocolate brownies, which will be cooked inside of a gourd covered with salt. First step to underground cooking, build a hole, fill it with stones and wood, and set it on fire. But also our version includes a rapini rail. Next, we're gonna prepare the food. We're gonna put it in the hole, we're gonna cover it up, and then in a little while, when we dig it up, we're hoping it's gonna be cooked to perfection. Fire is going pretty solid. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. We should start getting the food together. Get a spit for the rabbit. Get the broth, yeah. Yes. The other thing too, on the way up, I saw dandelions, so we could go pick some for a salad. That's cool. The unflowered ones would be really good. I'm gonna go right now. What? Where, where are you gonna go? I'm gonna go pick dandelion greens. Oh. Great. Okay. Yeah. See you in a bit. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna empty out the broth. This is our broth for the um, uh, rabbit. rabbit. All right, now that we've extracted the veggies from the broth, we can cut them up and brown them, and this will become the base for our rabbit stew. All right, so that's ready to brown. Hey, hey Micah. Tons of salad by the side of the road. Have you tried it? Yeah, it's bitter. It's hard to find stuff that's not already flowered. Add a little vinaigrette, and dandelions become a beautiful salad. This is the hottest cooking I've ever done in my life. So, no, but when that stuff is sufficiently brown, you can pour the wine in. All right. It's all rustic looking. I'm just gonna pour the bouquet garnet broth yeah. in with the rest of the stew. Look at that. That's gonna be a great sauce. I'm gonna take these porcini mushrooms. I'm gonna dry them out, toast them a little bit, make a porcini dust, rub the rabbit in the porcini oh, dust. Yeah. Sounds good. That's the rabbit. Olive oil on the rabbit. Okay, so this is the last step for our little rabbit. Cool. It's gonna get some thyme and some rosemary. And then uh, on the spit, we'll brown the rabbit a bit before we stew it underground. Wicked. Yeah, check that out, man. That's amazing. Look at that. No, boo, I'm gonna try your dipstick. Oh, we're running pretty low. So I'm gonna top it up. Oh, we're running really low. You can hear it sizzle in there. That looks so good. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop it into pieces and then I'm gonna throw it in the stew. All right, I'm starting to make my carrot holder. This is a dream. <laughs> I'm gonna get the broth going for the polenta. Woo, instant heat. I'm gonna start browning the um, creamy, the morels, and the red peppers for the uh, Tamales. This is the uh, filling for the tamales polenta. Oh, man, so good. That's New Mexico mm. meets Italy. Totally. It totally smells like uh, this stew that my grandparents used to make. So um, I'm mixing up the polenta, dudes. So you're doing a combo of cornmeal and corn flour? Yep. Which we're going to put inside of the tamales. Yeah, we'll put inside those corn husks there by your feet. Right. And, and then, then we'll wrap those, those in, in clay. clay. Hey guys, check out these tamales. So cheese goes on. Is that, uh, what kind of cheese? That's uh, organic Parmesan. And then some of these chestnuts. And then they get twisted up. 
Whoa, nice bundles. Should I gut the squash out? <laughs> yeah, scoop it out. I'm gonna be uh, mixing the cake, the wet and the dry. It already smells so chocolatey, the cocoa powder. Oh yeah, and how are the beets looking? Looking great. Oh yeah, isn't it amazing how red it turns? Yeah. Cake mix going in the squash. I'm about to get the salt mixture going. So just like Daisuke said, I'm just gonna take some of the uh, the whites of the egg. Yeah. Yep. And toss it in. And he put in very little. Little, right? Yeah. I can't wait to try the rapini tunnel too. Oh yeah. We can do that though when everything's cooking. Whoa! Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Nice save. Well, we almost did some above ground cooking. <laughs> oh. All the flavors are starting to meld. Oh, man. Micah's to the left of me, like <laughs> cutting up a rabbit, throwing it in a stew. I'm laying salt on a squash that's got cake mix in it. And Martin's is making tamales. Where am I right now? Weirdo camp. <laughs> <laughs> some other civilization which uses tunnels to cook the rapini. We're verging on cult cooking. Check it out. It's like, yeah, it's it's like a dirty snowball. It's wicked. <laughs> yeah, Toronto <laughs> snowball. Look at those. Japanese monster movie laid them. Okay. So these guys are ready to wrap in clay. Okay, I'm gonna start mixing up some clay. Right on, the clay is gonna conduct the heat while protecting the tamales as they cook underground. I'm just trying to make a bottom to protect the, the stew so it doesn't overheat. Okay, so we have our heat shield for our stew. Should I find a spot for it and put it in right now? Yeah. We were talking about city planning. Yeah. All right, this is what our city would look like if we planned it. <laughs> like, do you want to live in there? One big, <laughs> one, like, One burn, burned out playground. We're about to go deep, boys. All right, dude, eggs are going to go in. Dessert eggs. OK, the stew's going in the corner. Are you guys ready? Look at that. I'll put the potatoes next to it. Whoa, it's hot. It's so hot. All right, what else are we missing? This is just the tamales. All right, so let's start shoveling the dirt. So Nobu, yeah. I would at, at this point I would want to put your carrots in. Nobu, they're looking wilty. You might want to water them. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is that a Pinot Grigio rainfall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're experiencing. All right. Oh, yeah. What is it like? Hour, hour and a half? We'll be eating. Yeah. yeah. Digging right. it up. Hey, look at oh, all the steam smoke coming out the rapini tunnel. Yeah. Tunnel. Going down. Everything is underground. The rapini rail just went in, and now we have to wait to see if it'll work and how it will taste. I think for the three of us, this has been the strangest cooking experiment ever, right? Underground cooking, underneath that mound is a gourmet meal waiting to be excavated. And while we're waiting, we're just thinking, how is it gonna taste? Are all the things that we did, are they gonna work? and we're only gonna know once we open it up in about 20 minutes. We're gonna have tamales, brownies cooked inside a salt and case squash, carrots, rapini cooked via rail train, and the main course, a rabbit stew. All right, I'm gonna check the level of the broth and the rabbit stew. Oh yeah? Yeah, we have about an inch. Okay, so we should check the rapini. Oh, you know what? Oh. <laughs> it's full on burnt. Well, it's well cooked. That's the tunnel, the tunnel is hot. All right, rapini rail. Nice. Round two. Are you going to do the olive oil and lemon at the end? Yeah. Going down. I say we unearth, but it's been cooking underground for like about an hour and a half now. Okay. All right, let's excavate the lid. Oh, yeah, the soil's hot. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's really hot. Oh, yeah. It's nice and toasty. Oh, man, your carrots are warm. Oh, are they yeah, really? they totally are. Really? Yeah, totally. I was nervous about them. Feel the top of the lid. It's totally hot. Yeah, it's totally hot. All right, let's do it. Okay. Good. The meat's looking cooked to me, on I mean, at least from there, right? Should we do a temperature reading? So we're looking at 120 Fahrenheit. That's not That's hot. not hot at all. No, that's not even like bathtub. Let's pull the pot straight up. Yeah. Pull the clay off the bottom and put it back in. Yeah, nice. Oh, look at the steaming. Though I am worried about the cake now. You know, like the over-insulation may not have worked for us. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Let's unearth it. I'm gonna go tamale gardening. The stew's done, just, just stew's done. yank it out. Oh, it's hot. Check it out, dude. Feel the carrots, the bottom part. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the carrot's done. It's done. We'll leave the dessert cooking. All right, I'll bring the plates over. Oh yeah, and Martin's is oh. opening a tamale. Oh, look at that, the cheese. 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, look at this. It's crazy. Look at this meal. Sweet, man. I gotta try the tamales first. I'm going right in right to the tamales. tamales. Oh, really? Oh, the tamales are smoky. Oh, that is great. That tamale is so good. It's like polenta tamale. Yeah, it goes so mm. well with the gravy mm. from the rabbit stew. Mm. If we were eating and it was just these tamales, I'd be satisfied. Yeah, I'm having a bite of rabbit, which is cooked perfectly. Mm. Oh, wow. It was really mild. Such a delicate flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's absorbed the wine, fried onions, and the rosemary. Rosemary. And the tomatoes, and the smoke from being brown on the spit. And the carrots, have you tried your carrot yet? No, no, I haven't tried it yet. It's oh, like it's totally cooked. Yeah. It's like perfectly done mm. at the tip. It's and then sweet. it's like raw at the top. How's the rapini? It's perfectly cooked. It's like slightly no. bitter, but offset by the olive oil. It's great. It's exactly the way I like rapini. Exactly. Perfect texture. Well done. On the ground. Solid. All that's left now is dessert. Oh, the salt mixture did not work so well. Oh, you know why? Why? Because we kept it wrapped up in the banana leaf, which didn't let it dry out. Oh, we, we can spoon it out. Is that a beet pudding? Oh, it's cooked. It's totally cooked. It's cooked. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, look at the chocolate and the cocoa nibs in there. Yep, it's delicious. A little salty. <laughs> Look.